Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity to present my research. <clears throat> I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Our group has explored the role of antenna coupling in radio frequency energy associated patient injury. Antenna coupling occurs when stray radio frequency energy is emitted from the active electrode or the monopolar bovi. As energy travels, um, as energy travels from the generator to the instrument, this uh, radio frequency energy is captured by other instruments, such as the camera cord. The captured energy is then emitted as heat at the tip of the telescope, which is the hypothesized mechanism of patient injury. Our previous data has demonstrated that there are several ways to mitigate the effect of this stray energy capture. This includes changing the power settings from uh, 30 to 2015, using cup mode instead of coagulation mode, decreasing the dwell time or active use of pressing the button on your monopolar instrument, and most importantly, separating the power generator from the camera power source, which prevents the cords from aligning in a parallel fashion, which eliminates the opportunity for antenna coupling and stray energy capture. So what about sills? Uh, the configuration of a SILS port forces the active electrode and monopolar bovi in parallel with the camera cord, wires, and other instruments regardless of generator placement around the patient. So our hypothesis is that the unique configuration of the SILS port, which forces all instruments to be essentially in parallel, would result in greater energy capture from antenna coupling uh, compared to the traditional four-port laparoscopic setup. This greater energy capture could be implicated in a higher risk for unintended thermal injury. Our specific aims were to identify the role that s the SILS orientation plays in stray energy capture and identify surgeon modifiable factors that could mitigate the effect. So we used a laparoscopic trainer, a monopolar energy generator, and then a thermal camera to capture to quantify the amount of heat generated. Energy was delivered to a laparoscopic L-hook for five seconds at 30 watts coag, and our primary outcome, which is stray current, was quantified by the heat of liver tissue that was adjacent but not touching our non-electrically active telescope and other laparoscopic instruments. Uh, stray current was measured uh, with camera cords in parallel and separated from the active monopolar cord in all experimental conditions, and a student's t-test was used uh, to evaluate continuous variables. First, we confirmed that the SILS configuration setup contributed to antenna coupling. With the active electrode cord bundled in parallel with the camera cord in SILS configuration, the tissues near the tip of the telescope increased 41 degrees Celsius above baseline, which was statistically significant. We then confirmed that antenna coupling occurred at the same rate as traditional laparoscopy in an instrument configuration known to promote stray energy capture, which is all of the cords being in parallel. We compared the heat generated with SILs to that with, of traditional laparoscopy when cords were bundled in both scenarios. The tissue temperature rise was statistically the same 41 degrees Celsius for SILS configuration and 39 degrees, cel degrees Celsius for um, traditional laparoscopy above baseline tissue temperatures. So first we demonstrated that antenna coupling or stray energy capture happens. Then we proved that we can modify this event with cord separation in this experimental setup. So in the traditional uh, laparoscopic four-port setup, we demonstrated that separation of cords decreases the energy capture by almost 50%. Uh, when in parallel, it's uh, 41 degrees Celsius, but when the cords are separated, the increase above tissue temperature from baseline is only 24 degrees Celsius. So this demonstrates that separation of cords can mitigate energy capture leading to unintentional thermal injury. Um, now that we know we can decrease stray energy capture with traditional four-port laparoscopy, can we decrease it in SILs with cord separation? So in the same experimental setup, just using a SILs port instead of four-port laparoscopy, we were unable to see a difference in the uh, amount of heat transfer to adjacent tissue with separation of cords. So separation of cords does not lead to a decrease in energy transfer from SILs 
uh, laparoscopic setup. Finally, we directly compared the energy capture in SIL's laparoscopic setup to traditional four-port laparoscopy when all cords are separated or a condition which uh, does not promote stray energy capture. Uh, the data demonstrates that in comparison to each other, SILS has almost twice the energy capture as traditional four-port laparoscopy, heating the adjacent, adjacent tissue 36 degrees Celsius, whereas in traditional it was only 17 degrees Celsius. So what does this tell us about cord separation, choice of laparoscopic approach, and stray energy capture? In the traditional uh, laparoscopic setup, bundling of cords is an effect modifier of stray energy capture and thermal injury. This means we can modify the dependent variable or outcome of thermal injury with the effect of cord separation or bundling, keeping the cords in parallel. However, in SILS configuration, the effect modification is overwhelmed because of the degree of stray energy capture inherent in the orientation of the instrument from the SILS port. So, in conclusion, SILS configuration is associated with high levels of energy capture or antenna coupling that could lead to possible thermal injury. Further, we are not able to mitigate this energy capture with cord separation, leaving us with potentially other maneuvers such as changing the power setting, mode, or dwell time, or avoiding the use of monopolar energy in SILS laparoscopic setup. Uh, cord separation in a traditional lap laparoscopic setup can be an effect modifier of antenna coupling and reduce the threat of thermal injury to the patient. However, this data may suggest that SILS is potentially an inherently less safe uh, laparoscopic approach from a surgical energy and patient safety perspective. I'd like to thank uh, my co-authors and especially my research mentors, Dr. Robinson and Dr. Jones. Thank you.